So in the Initiative for Heritage Conservation, we're trying to provide current and future heritage managers with the skills they need in order to do their jobs better for the benefit of heritage internationally. The Executive Leadership Series in Heritage Management provides current heritage managers, professionals who are managing sites, museums, intangible or tangible heritage assets all over the world with the skills they need in a short format. So in three day or four day intensive workshops uh, at a very, very high level with very high quality professionals. We're thrilled to be able to teach a wide cross-section of heritage managers from a number of countries about the basics of fundraising. And that includes how do you actually solicit a gift from someone, from an individual for example. How do you figure out which corporations or foundations might be appropriate targets for your nonprofit? How do you do that research? How do you talk about your nonprofit in a way that attracts people first to follow you or volunteer for you and then to actually donate money to your cause? Uh, we call that the case for support. So the workshop is about teaching future and current leaders of nonprofit organizations how best to raise money online, offline, uh, from grant makers, from ordinary citizens, from very wealthy people, uh, thinking about it all strategically with planning, purpose, and uh, great intent. What I do basically is to focus on a project which takes place in southwest Turkey uh, and I work with archaeologists and in archaeological sites to make the, these sites economically viable for local communities and to introduce a kind of soft tourism so that they can make some profits out of these sites. So I'm coming from a history museum of Bosnia and Herzegovina from Sarajevo, which is a museum with 70 years old uh, tradition. But we can see that living in a post-war, post-conflict society uh, with its many consequences, the museum is one of the collaterals of such situations. And I personally applied for, for this workshop entitled or dealing with fundraising for a situation that I already explained about the museum being in the position not to be funded. So that means that we have to think of other ways, of, of alternative ways of uh, getting funding for the museum, even for the basic rights. Through that programs, we are giving the opportunities to young people to learn more about the history, about the place and about the heritage, and more they know about the place where they are living, more they love it, more they they are likely to stay there and to make their own activities or businesses. So part of the main, I will say, motivation to come here is, I will say, recession going on in the last seven years in Europe or around the world, which put more influence or press on museums to have self-sustainable. In that sense, fundraising is becoming uh, more and more essential for uh, all of them. Heritage sites are often restored and then 20 years later they need to be restored again. With better management, the sites have a chance of being sustainable for the longer run. And that includes better management practices given to archaeologists that come to sites to manage them uh, as archaeologists and end up also managing the organizations around the sites. And since the organizations are very often nonprofits or NGOs, uh, they need to know about fundraising. The 
working for a governmental institution puts me in the position to be aware, to, to see that uh, heritage uh, is hard to protect because there is a lot of money that must be invested in cultural heritage. Now I know that there are so many possibilities for fundraising and now I know how it is done for example in states and the fact that those methodologies can be transferred into Bosnia. Even if you're a small organization, the way many of these heritage sites and museums are, you need to know what's happening in fundraising because in some sense you're competing for dollars with those larger institutions and you need to know the latest about what's happening in fundraising. This workshop was uh, very inspiring. For us uh, it's uh, very important uh, to raise uh, the funds uh, on a global level because uh, coming from the small country which was uh, in the last years uh, pretty much affected by the global financial uh, crisis, we need to be open and we have to look over the borders. So it helped me a lot to really open up and to discuss with colleagues very concrete and detailed uh, things on issues of fundraising that I can start applying from Monday already. In three days you can have basics and you are really prepared to do, I will say, small-scale projects on your own. The exchange of knowledge and experience with other colleagues from the region and from Western Europe were uh, very precious to me. Now I know what, what are the problems and some things can be solved. We can solve them together. We can exchange uh, knowledge, experience, contacts. So it was for me quite um, crucial to be here and to take part of this uh, fundraising workshop because uh, sometimes it seems very straightforward and banal but then when you are within a group who is engaged and who is doing something that is similar to yours then you see the points that needs to be raised and I'm sure I'm taking quite a lot of things back home and it has been very helpful. The secret sauce is to have a good uh, mission statement uh, to have a good story about the organization, an authentic story about why this, why now, why us, and so what. And if that is conveyed uh, with brevity and passion, uh, storytelling is really the new fundraising today. The professionalization of fundraising basically means not only getting more money for your assets, but it also means doing it properly, doing it better, with respect to what you're managing, with respect to your collection and the heritage that you're looking after.